Right, so in today's video, I'm going to be explaining how you can perfectly level your own lawn at home using only topsoil. So this house is a new build property, it's around about three years old now and when we first moved in the lawn was in an absolute state. I watched a video from Lawn right recently where he was talking about the state of gardens and new build properties and how the developers don't even do anything to put a half decent lawn in place. When we moved into our house the garden was literally like, was like a clay jungle almost at the back. It wasn't even like smooth clay, it was all massive like rocky clumps where the ground had obviously been dug out when they were putting the foundations in for the house and the garden was just left in ruin. It was full of bricks, all sorts of rubbish, bags, tons of different things that we found in it. So when we decided to actually renovate the garden last year, a massive job was to take off a lot of the clay that was on that bottom tier and replace it with some good quality topsoil. It was quite a big task and we had a massive, I think it was like an eight ton skip that we had to get rid of a lot of the clay, but it was absolutely worth it. We got five tons of topsoil, whacked it down, leveled it out, and it has been perfect for the past 12 months. I have got videos on my channel of how I leveled the clay soil, how I actually seeded the lawn from scratch originally. So if you would like to check out those videos, the links will all be in the description and you can head over to my channel and see all of my garden renovation videos too. So if you are going to take on a task like this, the first thing you've got to do is scalp your lawn down as low as you can get it. So get the strimmer out, take off all the edges and then get your lawn mower and cut the lawn on the lowest setting that you can. I started off with the second lowest setting on my lawn mower just to get off that bit of top growth and then once I'd done that, I went over it again with the lowest setting just to make sure the grass was as low as it could possibly be. So like I've just said, for the second pass, I put it on the lowest setting to scalp it as much as I could. If you do have a cylinder mower, you'll be able to get even closer to the soil level, but I don't. So using the lowest setting on a rotary was the best I could do. So after you've scalped your lawn, it's time to get on and scarify it too. Now I'm using the Ferrex electric scarifier in this video, which I do have a video for on my channel. I posted a review last year with the different attachments that it comes with and the benefits of using both. So if you would like to check that out, the link will be somewhere in the description below. The scarifying attachment has these blades and what the aim of them is to do is to sort of cut into the soil level and rip out any of the thatch that's there. You can get yourself a hand scarifier to do a job like this, but if your lawn's a similar size to mine, it's gonna take you absolutely ages. It's gonna be back breaking. And God help you if you've got a lawn that's any bigger than mine because it's gonna be an absolute mammoth task to do it by hand. <music> decided to go in both directions with the scarifier and the reason for this was to get out as much of the thatch that I could and also just to scar the ground as much as I could too. You can rake up some of the loose thatch by hand but I just decided to go in with the lawn mode just to pick up any of the sort of loose thatch that had been left on the lawn. I'm using the Westland topsoil today to level the lawn and it's the same topsoil that I've used on the front lawn recently and the same topsoil that I used on the top tier back lawn as well last summer. You can get yourself a bulk bag of topsoil to do a job like this and if you have got quite a big lawn it might be worth investing in getting either a bulk bag or getting some loose topsoil dumped on the driveway. That's what I did last year, I needed 5 tons of topsoil to replace that thick layer of clay that we had in the garden. I knew that I only had slight bumps in the lawn this year so I knew that by buying the bags of topsoil it'd be much more sort of cost efficient than actually going out and buying a couple of bulk bags. <music> So after dumping each bag of topsoil, I'm just using a regular rake to rake out the actual topsoil itself and then using a lawn lute to get a nice even level across the lawn. A lawn lute is something that's uh, quite expensive to be honest when it comes to tools. This one is the Lanzi one which costs around about £120 but it is something that you are going to be using every year when it comes to getting that nice level on your lawn. So although it is a big expense to start with, it's something that will be worth its weight in gold going forward.
noticed when I started leveling the first corner in the lawn that it was a little bit difficult leveling the soil up to the lawn bordering. Now the reason being is because I've actually put this lawn bordering in recently after installing a French drain to stop the flooding on the patio. I decided to fill in these spaces first just because I noticed the soil was falling down into the dips when I was trying to compress it down by stepping onto it. So by filling these gaps in first it means that the leveling will be much easier moving forward. I had a similar problem at the back of the lawn that I did at the front of the lawn. Now when I installed this lawn bordering last year, it left a bit of a gap which I thought would fill over time when the soil was compressed and it didn't, it just left the space open. So I thought by filling this space in first, it would make the lawn leveling much easier, which it did. Something I wanted to mention too is that I'm using topsoil rather than using a topsoil and sand mix. Now there are a few reasons why I decided to do this. The first of which is that topsoil is an organic matter that doesn't degrade over time. Now it will settle and it might make your lawn a little bit bumpy in places after a few years, but if you are continually leveling your lawn, this isn't gonna be a problem. Also, the topsoil is able to hold onto a lot of nutrients things that have been put onto the ground like fertilizers, granular fertilizers, different things that you put down to feed your grass. The topsoil can hold on to them and help release them into the roots of the plants. When you apply sand to your lawn, even though it's not gonna break down over time, similar to topsoil, it's not able to hold on to those nutrients. The main purpose of the sand is just to get a nice flat level lawn. I did consider using sand and topsoil for this leveling, but I decided against it this year. And the reason being is that the topsoil that I put down last year seemed to settle over time and it made a few little bumps, hence why I'm leveling the lawn again today. But I didn't want to go in with sand just yet. I wanted to make sure that any of those little bumps were filled with topsoil. So then when I eventually do put sand onto the lawn, it gets a nice level surface, but there's a lot of organic matter below the sand too. Now even though I've said that I've not put any sand down onto the lawn, you'll notice from quite a lot of these bags you can tell there's quite a high sort of sand content in them anyway. Any of the topsoil you buy is going to contain some sand, but it's going to be significantly less than buying a, let's say a 50-50 or a 70-30 sand to topsoil mix. You can just see how smooth the lawn loot makes the lawn. It makes what can be quite a difficult job quite easy. I used a landscaping rake last year, which did do the job quite well, but the lawn loot just did the job even better and even faster. see that some of the existing lawn is poking out because I didn't want to kill the entire lawn but there is significantly less grass sticking out at the front than what there is at the back because there was much more leveling needs at the front of the lawn. I'm using the A1 Lawns Premiership Pro grass seed to overseed this lawn. It's the exact same grass seed that I used this time last year when I seeded the lawn from scratch so hopefully when the new grass comes through it blends quite well with the old grass that's already there. I'm using the Scott Spreader for this, which I think is quite useful when you're working in a small space like this. You often see the seed spreaders, which distribute the seeds from sort of like waist height. But I think with a lawn this small, you're just gonna end up with seeds all over the show. And then it was time to get some compost on the lawn just to finish off and top dress it. Now there are a few reasons why you should be using compost to top dress any overseeding project. The first reason is the fact that the compost contains loads of nutrients which is really really good for the existing grass and is really good for the new grass that's going to come through too. And it also stops the birds from getting to your seed too, which shouldn't be a problem for me which you'll see why in a moment. However one thing you shouldn't do is try and level your lawn using compost. 
the compost will eventually break down over time, it'll degrade away into the soil and it'll no longer be there. Whereas something like topsoil and sand is what's going to be there in your lawn forever. And the last thing I decided to do was to put some landscaping fabric down over the lawn. Now again, I did this for a few different reasons. The first reason is that it's only early spring. Well, it is at the time of actually recording this video anyway. And the temperatures, even though they're fair at the moment, they're still not as good as they're gonna be in the next three, four, five weeks. So by putting this landscaping fabric down, it almost acts like a little bit of a greenhouse to keep the soil below nice and warm when the sun's beating down onto it. Also, when it rains or when you put the sprinkler on, it helps keep the moisture in the soil, which then helps with the germination of the new seeds. And the final reason is that I've got a dog and he's an absolute nightmare when it comes to digging anything. So by putting this down, it just hopefully preserves those new seeds so that they can actually germinate properly. I will be posting a video in the next few weeks just to keep you up to date with how the lawn is looking, how the germination is getting on and how the lawn starts to thicken up and go nice and green. However, if you would like to see what the results were like this time last year when I seeded the lawn from scratch, I do have some videos on my channel which will be linked below which show you what the lawn looks like after around about four weeks of seeding in early spring. I also have a short series on my channel of how I renovated a small lawn from scratch. It was part of my garden renovation series last year and the lawn turned out really, really nice. And that's it for today's video. If you have liked it or if you have found it useful, feel free to give it a like. And if you'd like to check out any of my other videos, you can head over to my channel. I've got a full garden renovation series on there. I've got loads of lawn tip videos. And if you like what you see, feel free to subscribe. And finally, thanks for watching. Thank you.